Now select the computer screen, then select Fingerprints from the computer menu. Go ahead and select the fingerprint from the paper bag. Here you can search for similar prints in the CSI database records. You can also compare any two fingerprints to see if they are a match. If you find multiple fingerprints at a crime scene, it's usually a good idea to see if they match. In this case, however, you only have one print, so the databases are your only option. Go ahead and search each database until you find possible match results. Next, select one of the search results. It will appear in the second viewing pane. Here, we're matching a partial print to a full print. Select the partial print on the left by placing the cursor over it, holding down the left mouse button, and dragging the print into one of the four quadrants of the full print. Release the button to drop it into place. If the partial print does not appear to match, you can choose another quadrant or try another fingerprint. When you find the matching quadrant, select Confirm Match. Good work. The fingerprint on the paper bag matches the prints of Officer Robertson in LVPD Officer. You may now bring Officer Robertson in for questioning, but first, let's review your case file. To review the case file, open your PDA and select Case File. The case file holds a summary of everything you've learned about victims and suspects. Select the Suspects tab at the top of the case file to learn about your new suspect. Now, let's look at your evidence trinity. The evidence trinity is a guide to measuring your progress in a case. You must find evidence that links the suspect to the victim, the victim to the crime scene, and the crime scene to the suspect. Finding enough of these connections will give Captain Brass the proof he needs to bring suspects in for questioning, gain search warrants, and eventually make an arrest. Now let's exit the case file. Now let's head over to Captain Brass's office to get your warrant. This is the office of Captain Jim Brass, who works with your team. His job is to do any police procedures you would need. He can obtain search warrants, put out APBs, or detain suspects for questioning. Now let's ask Captain Brass for a warrant. Notice that when you move your cursor over him, the cursor changes into a speech bubble. This means you can talk to him. Well, there's no real need to get a judge involved if you're only looking for a missing donut. But since this is a tutorial, I'll have him brought into the interrogation room immediately. This is the interrogation room. When you are granted a warrant to bring a suspect in for questioning, Captain Bass will bring them directly to this room. Note that while a character is speaking, you can skip to the end of their current speech by pressing the space bar. You may now begin questioning Officer Robertson. Nope, not a clue. Well, sure, my prints are on the bag. I was the one who bought the donut. I left it in the car for him, like always. Never saw it again after that. Uh, crumbs. Uh, th uh, those must be something else. A chemical test? What, you science types think you can match these crumbs to the ones left in the bag? Well, look, Grissom Jr., there's no need to go that far. I admit, I ate it, okay? 
Jeez, I didn't mean to cause any trouble. I was really hungry. Grissom left that bag alone in the car for hours. I thought he didn't want it. So I ate the donut and threw the bag in the trash. Look, I'll apologize and make it up to him. I, I promise. Just don't tell my wife. I'm supposed to be on a diet. Congratulations. This case is officially closed. And remember, if you ever find yourself stuck on a particular case, you can always talk to your CSI partner and ask for hints. Your training is now complete. To exit, select Options menu from your PDA. Good luck on your next assignment.